bid. Uh, another fellow Singaporean has one more reason to cheer. He's local bowl maker Zhang Merwin Tong. Come this Sunday, the 1st of January, 2023, his full-length film, Fairyville, will make its debut on Netflix, the huge streaming giant. This is yet another milestone for the local film sector, as it's a pretty big deal if your film is available to uh, the Netflix's global audience. Well, Fairyville is a 2015 coming-of-age drama dystopian film set in a fictional college it's also called Fairyville. Months away from graduation, the outcasts clash with some frat-type bullies with harmless pranks turning into deadly acts of terror. So let's bring on Fairyville's creator, scriptwriter and director, Zhang Merwin Tong. Hey, Zhang, congratulations for current and future filmmakers listening in. How do they get their films or TV series on Netflix? What did you do? Hi, hi Melody. Thanks for having me here. I think I think I'm very fortunate from, from what I know, Netflix doesn't deal directly with independent filmmakers. Uh, and um, and it may be pointless for independent filmmakers to, to, to write to them directly because they don't deal individually. They they work with studios uh, to, to buy films in the bulk. I think uh, part of part of what happened with me is that uh, I thank a lot to the to the recent resurgence of uh, of of Fairview, the interest in Fairview and the, and the teams that we talk about. Even though I'm an independent filmmaker uh, who made my film without a studio, without government funding, um, um, I think there are certain teams in Fairview, the teams of uh, social division, the us versus them narrative that has gotten uh, a lot of new interests uh, that we didn't have back in 2015 uh, because we don't have the words for it and, and maybe 2015 was a volatile time and 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 uh, certain things were a little bit too sensitive to talk about um, but I think now in, in, in this age um, <laughs> I think these teams are getting are, are, are in mainstream conversations again about the oppressed about the powerless and also how the oppressed and the powerless uh, sometimes turn to extremism in order to express themselves. Hey, so we know that this is a, this film, Fairyville, is a continuation of your earlier film, The Saints, which was also about students who are social outcasts. Why then did you want to continue along this narrative, narrative and, and this theme? Ah, yes, it's very interesting that you brought up The Saints. The Saints is a, a film that I made in 1999 and, and yes, it's also about outcasts and misfits. In a way, I think misfits and outcasts are, are very interesting characters for storytelling, right? And I've always uh, related to the, to the outlier in society. It's, it's very much the people who are brave enough to, to do things differently from everybody else that's, that gives that pushes society forward, that pushes culture forward and it also gives a certain kind of character to to to, to society and, and and I think from the from the from my heroes who are the beat poets, uh, the punks in the seventies, the sci fi writers like H. G. Wells and Jules Verne, they're all outliers and I think I think it's it's a place that I I draw inspiration from and I and I put my characters like that. I create characters like that. Yeah, and it's uh, it's something to say about timing because the punk fashion icon Vivian Westwood, her death has was announced today, so it's uh, it's also good to remember her as you talk about these outcasts and outlier personalities who are so dear to you, uh, Zhang. And you also acted in your film The Saints. I remember watching you in that one. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> because we chatted on air, didn't we? In yes. About Right? Yes, Zach, yes, yes. Long time ago. Yes. Uh, you acted as W. Ash Fake, and this, this same character was used as one of the plot points in Fairyville. So we can see you in Fairyville. The Saints was a small budget, if not no budget, indie production using your contacts and friends. So, how did you find the Fairyville actors? Yeah, I think Saints was completely no budget. Fairyville is still independent budget. Uh, made on very 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 tight constraints, uh, um, so I don't have the luxury to to do this 
big uh, nationwide audition call and 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 and, and dangle a, a big budget to 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 pay uh, working actors. Um, so I, I what I wanted to do is in the spirit of punk rock, in the spirit of uh, independent filmmaking, I wanted to find artists, actors who are who are excited about about working on an independent film as well. And but the other challenge that I had is I'm working with on a teen movie, which means I cannot work with very experienced actors. I need to work with young actors. Uh, so that that is the big challenge. I was fortunate enough. I worked with. Uh, a creative agency called Motion. Uh, I was a creative residence in that agency where I contributed some work for them. But I, I asked Motion, this creative agency, to help me reach out to international schools. So uh, we reached out to international schools, we talked to the theatre actors, we talked to theatre groups, uh, and we looked for young talent. And I think the role of a teen movie is always to, to look for the new young stars and, and, and to give these young stars uh, uh, a refreshing uh, new uh, new to bring refreshing new talent to to, to cinema and oh, I think that's fantastic that's yeah 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 and you you've uh, spotted a few then yes 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 uh, I think it was the theater actors or theater lecturers in in the in the American school and in the uh, the Canadian International School that were very very helpful in helping me to spot uh, talent uh, again, we go through auditions. Some of the actors are really young, so I had to speak to their parents. Uh, I, <laughs> I had to speak to their parents to, to tell them what the role encompasses because I think I'm an educator myself. I understand uh, how how parents feel about uh, uh, young 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 individuals uh, wanting to, to work in a film and whether or not they need they are, they are well protected on set. So I, I, I insisted to speak with their, their parents to tell them exactly what what will encompass uh, what they have to do in the film. Yeah, it's good that you looked out for them in many senses of the word. Well, Fairyville has been in DVD format for a few years because this is a 2015 film and has been touring the film festivals as well. But uh, Zhang, what have ordinary film goers been writing in to say about it? Both good and also there are unfavorable reviews too. What have they been saying mostly? Yes, thank you for this question because I, I really like it. I, I I knew what kind of film I'm making. I, uh, me and my team knew the kind of film that Fairville is. It can be a little bit much. It's, it's, it's intense. It's it, it's heavy uh, in the issues that it, it wants to talk about. It wants to do it uncompromisingly. So when we when we wanted to release it we knew that we couldn't we, we decided to premiere in la los angeles um rather than in singapore so that we could get an international perspective before we bring it home uh the the, the premiere in la was fantastic with a stunning reception uh people relate every country that fairyville goes to uh, connects with this audience very very differently uh, it seems like the film often touches a raw nerve uh, and and there are people who respond very very positively to it as well as negatively to it in LA um, the conversation was about bullying school shootings and um, and how um, the, the bullet the marginalized sometimes get pushed so much that they have nowhere else to go uh, Back in Singapore, it was a conversation about unspoken things about about bullying, about people who cannot fit in, or people who don't belong. Uh, we had uh, psychologists, uh, psychotherapists who are helping youth at risk, who, 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 who chatted with me and told me how they related to this film, uh, how they related, how this film speaks a lot about the people that they are taking care of and looking after. And in 2019, when, when Fairyville was screened in Romania, it was a conversation about what leads to a revolution. Because I think when Fairyville was screened in Romania, it was, screened, it was invited to be the closing film for the Central European Film Festival in Timisoara. And I think they were celebrating 30 years of the Romanian Revolution. And they were talking about how the themes of distorted truths, young people, and young people being, being uh, I think, in the in the Romanian Revolution, it was young people being shot. But I think in 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 uh, in Fairyville, it was idealistic young people who who take their ideals too far. Um, and all of this resonated as a like a post-revolution kind of a conversation. 
So I, at the same time, I also have a lot of people come to me in my face to tell me that they really hated the film. Because, oh. <laughs> I tell you why. Because, you know the team, the very, very American team of fighting for what you believe in, uh, uh, taking a stand, uh, Fairville is the opposite of it. Fairville is a film, it's talking about how ideology can be a dangerous thing. And instead of fighting for what you believe in, at least in the film, I suggested that you need to be afraid of what you fight for. <laughs> and I think that can, that can be uh, very dampening. It's <laughs> uh, 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 and there are people who followed the characters and and felt so so uh, broken, heartbroken. <laughs> the film takes you on this on this journey, and 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 the, 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 um, so yes, uh, I have this this division uh, uh, of uh, this 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 polarity <laughs> of, of of reception to the film. Yeah, I'm thinking about another movie as well called Pleasantville. Uh, some years back. Hey, um, can we ask you about uh, whether it's fair to say there are flashes of Stanley Kubrick and Anthony Burgess's uh, A Clockwork Orange in Fairyville? It's interesting that you said that as well. When when I made my very first film, E Saints, and how my character was in the head and in the eyeliner, everybody was saying that hey, this is this is the guy from Clockwork Orange, and I and I said, I haven't watched. I was nineteen years old. Uh, Clock of Orange was not in Singapore, it was banned. I, I haven't watched that film. So, so, uh, so, in, but in a way, I think Anthony Burgess, uh, Stanley Kubrick, they are making films about these, these weird characters, these weird characters who are trying to make, create their own world. In, and, and this world where they create their own language, for me, I'm creating a, a dystopian, fictional, alternate universe uh, where teenagers can which is not Singapore it is Fairyville uh, I think I think it's not unfair <laughs> uh, uh, as, as world builders uh, and me trying to create a different imagination to the Singapore film and offer a different imagination to what a Singapore film can be uh, I, yes it's, it's my thing <laughs> yeah he, he Mac, Malcolm McDowell is the author who acted as that character of Clockwork Orange, uh, truly, truly such a special film. And I do see that in Fairyville, flashes of that. Well, Fairyville will be available on Netflix this Sunday, New Year's Day. Will you be holding a viewing party? And uh, what do you hope we can take away from it that you haven't mentioned already? Well, I I'm not having a screening party. I, 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 I haven't planned for anything yet. Uh, there's been so many things going on this year and it's just such exciting news that I just heard a few days ago about Fairview. But if the, to, to answer the question about uh, what can I say about this, I would like everybody to watch the film with an open mind. It's a film that is dedicated to, to the misfit, right? To the rebels and the thinkers that is in every one of us. Uh, Kenny Chan from K Books Kinokuniya has called this film a love letter to to misfits and uh, and maybe the characters may not be very uh, related not the characters may not be relatable to everybody but I hope for everybody to just give them a little bit of a chance find out uh, watch the film and, and find out what their world is like and and maybe uh, you can understand a little bit more about uh, you can find meaning in the film and, and understand uh, why we have this team of ideology can be a dangerous thing and how we sometimes need to reconsider what we fight for. You're also an educator, you're on the other side now, so to speak. <laughs> can you empathize with the two sides now, the struggling rebel student and the teacher disciplinarian? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I relate and connect with uh, teenagers who have difficulty expressing themselves I, I, I connect with the naughty kids as well as the good kids uh, but at the same time I'm also a, as an educator I teach in at a Republic Polytechnic in the School of Technology for the Arts I teach visual storytelling um, as a educator I'm also responsible for control right the control of a classroom the control of people and the safety of students so so yes I'm on the other side <laughs> Uh, I know what I'm supposed to do. 
um, to 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 maintain some kind of an order. Uh, but I think it is in. Uh, but I also create safe spaces for chaotic creative expression, and I think we need that for to 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 create exciting new works. Well, that's a fine line, but I'm sure you balance on it very well, Zhang. Well, when it comes to merch, right, merchandise, you've been selling not just DVDs but figurines of the Mother Saint statue seen in Fairyville, and we can right now we're talking to you on Zoom, and we can see the Mother Saint. Uh, there's a saint-like figure holding a gun in one hand and a book in the other. There, there is Mother Saint. I'm looking at it now. Uh, she's red this time. So, holding a gun in one hand, a book in the other. Will you be selling more of those post Netflix? It's really look. It's quite a, f a nice thing to have in the living room. I I, I think so. I think I worked with a uh, uh, flap slap, a local toy maker who wanted to work with me to create to collaborate with me to create this toy sculpture, and I think this 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 mother saint statue, which we call the rebel saint, uh, for the toy the, for the line of toys. Um, we, we, we positioned it as this little monument that you could put in the house and it protects all the rebels and thinkers. <laughs> um, uh, the last batch that we had was uh, was sold out. Uh, it was limited edition and we, we came up with the ones in green and it was all sold out. And then later we came up with a red one and a white one. Um, I think merchandise has always been a part of rock and roll right <laughs> and i think with, with all my fans uh with, with all my all my heroes uh, uh uh having this kind of visual iconography i wanted to have my own and that's the reason why we have the statues we have the dvds we have stickers um and it's also my way of not letting this little piece of work die right it's something that's made it took me eight years to complete it it's completed in 2015 but at the same time um people still remember it and I want something visual for people to 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 associate with this film and I think the the typography the the, the visual iconography is a big part of uh, uh, the fairview legacy yeah it's quite an arresting image okay in 20 seconds are you still gonna do dystopian youth films <laughs> or are you moving on very quickly Yes, I, I think I'm always writing, I'm always thinking, I'm always putting things down. I think the world, the idea of creating a different imagination is always in me, but I'm not in a rush to make the next film. All right. Well, when you do, you know who to call and find on Facebook. That is Zhang Merwin Tong, creator, scriptwriter and director of local film Fairyville. Happy New Year to you, Zhang. Zhang's also, uh, you gotta, you got to watch his teen dystopian movie, streaming on Netflix this Sunday, the 1st of January 2023.